Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Uh, per usual, we are keeping Soapy Priop out of the studio or whoever this new attacker was on the two-year anniversary. He's denying it. I don't know who it was, but we want to be safe here. Um, also, this show is dedicated to the memory of WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall. And a uh, big shout-out to the Free Jacks for their first home win of the season this year. But my guest, uh, the host of B13 Nerds Cast of Randomness, Brandon Belanger, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me, Dan. Yeah, good Pleasure. To, good to have you on. I know we've been on camera before together yes. on Leo's show. Yes. So, but uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Um, All right. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? So, I'm from originally Nashville, New Hampshire. I live in Manchester now. I uh, lived in Nashville the majority of my life, 28 years, and uh, been a New Hampshire kid my whole life. I got a 603 tattoo nice. right there, live free or die. I'm all about that lifestyle. Um, but yeah, lived in Nashville my whole life. Um, had a good childhood growing up and a very interesting one, as I said on uh, another show one time. And uh, yeah. Awesome. And you went, did you go to South? Yes, I did go to Nashville South, the original Nashville High School. That's, I was a Purple Panther. And you, yeah. you wrestled for them too, right? Yes. Yeah, so I did uh, wrestling for four years, freshman year through senior year. Uh, junior year at the time, I only did one match because at the time my father was going through prostate cancer. So it was just too much for me to deal with at that time. But yeah, all four years of high school. Nice. Yeah. I, well, I three because I fractured my ankle junior year, but I started wrestling in third grade maybe. But who was yeah. the coach then? Uh, I think it was uh, Coach Oddly that I okay. believe. Yes. Awesome. We had I had Keith Richard, and now he's I believe the principal there. So yeah, uh, he's gone big time. Nice. Uh, <laughs> what are three things that everybody should know about you? Uh, to be completely honest, and it's it's kind of crazy because when I thought about that question, I was like, oh, what's the best way to describe me? Um, I'm very, I'm very honest, like 100% honest. I'll be honest. Back in the day, I was not an honest person, but I've changed my ways uh, the past like three years. I've been trying to get myself together and trying to like uh, uh, grow up more and try to be more of a man and trying to you know fix my life. And if it wasn't for Cat, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Uh, but yeah, I would say honest. Um, I would definitely say busy because I'm always doing something. Whether it was wrestling at the time, but I'm always working. I always like trying to do stuff to keep myself busy. And same thing with the podcast. So busy would be another word. And uh, nerdy. Yeah. Completely honest, man. <laughs> I mean, you're talking to a guy who has like over 250 wrestling DVDs, over you know 575 uh, movies, TV shows on DVD, with along with Netflix and stuff, action figures, comic books, belts. I got the whole nine yards. So. Nice, nice. I, I think we have a lot in common. Yes, <laughs> yes. I saw that. I was like, I'm gonna take that Michael Myers <laughs> off your hands, man, for sure. <laughs> um, but no, no, good answer. And uh, and sticking with the theme of the show, which is let freedom ring, and we we ask every guest this and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people um, but what does it mean to you to be an American uh, you know that's another question I it was very hard to like trying to explain that because again I'm not like a political person I know we've had like a lot of crazy stuff happen in America the last you know several years now um, you know the same thing with the motto of New Hampshire you know live free or die I'm, I'm living you know trying to live the best life that I can and I'm doing it in the, you know I believe in the greatest state are the greatest country, the United States of America. Uh, I'm free to do whatever I want without anybody like telling me how to do it, and you know I'm gonna die happy. So that's the best way to describe it, and I love our country, even though there's been a lot of craziness, but I believe my country. Yeah, I said this on the live stream the other day, because someone explained it, and I said, uh, Creed Bratton, I don't know if you know The Office. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He said, I already won the lottery, baby. I was born in America. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But uh, no, very good answer, and I agree. I believe New Hampshire is the best state. Yes, uh, it is. I, there's no doubt about it in my mind. Definitely the safest state, I think. <laughs> you know. Well, we have, uh, I believe, what was it? We have the, le the least amount of shootings or murders and stuff, yes. yet we have some of the most relaxed uh, gun laws yes. in, in the country. Yes. So... I love, you know, I love New Hampshire, and plus we got the mountains, we got the ocean, yeah, close to Boston, exactly. Um, but I want to talk about your show, uh, B13 uh, Nerdcast of Randomness, and that I know you started this recently, yes. Correct? Um, but this isn't your first podcast. How did you decide? I believe you were doing a wrestling show for a yeah. while. How did you decide to make a change? So the the true story about that is when I started training to become a professional wrestler, um, I called myself a wrestling student because I never had a wrestling match. Um, I started, what I really wanted to know was what the business was really all about. 
So once I started learning what it was all about, like, yeah, I can know like the history of like who won this belt. I can remember matches and moments, but I didn't really know what wrestling was all about. So when I started training from the best teachers that the industry can learn from in New England, um, I decided to cut the show off because I kind of felt like I was a fool for some of the stuff I was saying about wrestling. So I just stopped from there. And then uh, of course, wrestling, two and a half years on and off training with you know a full-time job and relationships, I didn't really have time to do podcasting anymore. So eventually I really wanted to do a podcast again because I listened to like a lot of podcasts. I listened to Something to Wrestle With. I listened to Chris Van Vliet. I listened to Steve-O's podcast, uh, Kurt Angle Show. I listened to so many podcasts like every single day. So I started learning from um, what they do because I felt like my podcast wasn't that good, especially with the editing. And I wanted to try to get better at it and take my time with it. And I felt like this was the opportunity. And I felt like it was just more about wrestling and I know there's more things I'm into besides wrestling. So I wanted to bring that platform into there. Yeah, I've had guests, but it was mostly about them and our friendship so far and just talk about and just shooting the crap, I guess you can say, and just talk about them, talk about us and just, you know, have a fun conversation and eventually have nerdy topics, talk about movies, shows, and just give my personal opinion on them and why I like them. So I just wanted to do something different just besides wrestling. I want to do something more. So. And I know, and we talked about this on Facebook one day, because I know your release dates, they're a little further back. Yes. Is that just because you just want to make them perfect and put the most time into like the editing and everything? A absolutely. I know like when it comes to like podcasts or shows, everyone does it like a week prior. For me, I do two weeks, once every two weeks on a Saturday. I just think it's perfect timing because one, I got a full-time job that works 60 hours a week and I do all the editing myself, you know, and I, you know, record it by myself and I want to make sure everything sounds right and uh, take the time to make it sure it looks perfect. So. No, understandable. Um, what can people expect when they, when they listen into the show? Uh, when they listen to it, just uh, true people, you know, and also just me being myself and get to see who I really am as a person. So that's the best way to describe it. And I know, and, and I, I do want to sit down and listen to it, because you did a Scream episode. Yes, I did. Uh, now, is that just focusing on the, the franchise as a whole, or just the, the new one? Yeah, so the new one came out, so I was like, okay, the first nerdy subject I'm going to talk about is Scream. So the way to start it, because again, there's so many different movies, there's five movies in total, so I wanted to go back and talk about the first one, and... For people who have not seen it, I want them to hear my side of viewing. And we know there's like a lot of shows that do it nowadays, but I want them to hear my side of the story of like why I like the movie, why I like the franchise. So I start off with the first one, then I decided to have uh, people give their inputs on the movie so they can hear our other people's inputs and not just mine. So it's just a start before they see like the sequels and all that. So No, I like that. Um... We did a. We've done some Halloween episodes on the show. Um, not you a, didn't uh, invite me. Oh well, we, we can. How dare you? We're, no, we're, we will be the, doing one for Halloween <laughs> Kills. So all right, uh, all right, let's stream, do it. But uh, I do. I, I mean, I, the Scream movies, like, except for three, in my opinion, are very rewatchable. Yeah, I could watch them over and over right. again, which is that's how you know you really enjoy a franchise. Yeah, it's, it's how many times you can rewatch it. Yeah. Um, have you had a, uh, do you have a favorite uh, episode that you did with either of the shows that you've done? So, uh, the, you know, I would be biased if I say the one with my fiance, but uh, us, every time I watch it, it's just so hilarious of like what we talk about. The one I just did with my sister, just going back memory lane, talking about us growing up, like that brought a lot of memories and a lot of laughs. And uh, when it came to the Wrestling Talk podcast, I, I would say the guest that I had was Robo, better known as Jorah Jaheel. Yeah. I had him on there, which I was like, holy crap. You know, he took the time out of his day to come to my house and do the oh, podcast. Oh, really? So, yeah. Was, he came over? Yeah. yeah so, um, if I think I still have that on my personal Facebook account. So, but yeah, those were the top three that I did that I loved very much, for sure. Yeah, and, and Robo's been doing a really good job. Yeah, he's, he has. He's a regular on AEW Dark, yeah. from, from what I've seen. Very so. happy for him. Very yeah. happy for him. Oh, very exciting. Um, now, where do you see the future of the show going? Do you see it just continuing to grow or? Honestly, when it, when it comes to stuff like that, um, you know, a lot of people have been asking me that question, like how far do you want it? How many viewerships do you want to get? Personally, I'm just doing it for fun, man. You know, I'm just doing it as a hobby and just trying to keep myself busy. 
And, uh, you know, if it gets to 100 views or 1,000 views, it doesn't really matter. I just love what I'm doing. And if it takes off, great. If it doesn't, just keep on trying and see how it goes. Now, what, uh, what platforms can we find it right now? So you can find it on Facebook, on the B13 Nerdcast of Randomness, the personal Facebook page. You can also find it on YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash B13 Nerdcast of Randomness. And uh, Instagram, it's my personal Instagram. I just call it B13 Nerd. It's just to pretty much promote uh, different episodes to like let you know when they're going to be. And sometimes I'll post like nerdy pictures or whatever. But those are the three platforms you can find them on. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. No, I think we have a lot. I would say we got a lot in common with it because, you know, obviously Let Freedom Ring, we don't stick to just one thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I started this, people were like, oh, you're probably, you know, some people sometimes think I do a wrestling show. And I don't yeah. know why. I'm like, obviously you're not watching. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you're always wearing like a Red Sox shirt yeah, yeah. or a Patriots shirt. I, I, I have a guest coming on. I hit, I hit him up. Uh, and I don't want to reveal who it is. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good guest if you if you know if you live in the area. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I, I I'm surprised you asked me. I thought it was a wrestling show. I'm like, let free. No, it's not a wrestling. And show. I think I asked you that too because I was like, well, I haven't trained in like about six or seven months. I haven't followed wrestling in a while, so I'm like, I don't know how much I can give you on wrestling. Yeah. So I was like making sure it wasn't just wrestling. So. Yeah. No. No. We don't. Not. Not here. We talk about it, but it's not. Yeah. Not. You know. All we talk about, right. or that I, I don't know. I just can. I like to have a wide range of guests. Like I think. That, yeah, that yeah, for sure. But I do want to talk some wrestling, I guess, because I want to talk right. about your wrestling training. All right. Uh, <laughs> Um, now, when you got into that a couple of years back, or so I did the the three fantasy camps. The first one I did was actually the first time I met you. It was, I believe, in February of 2018. That was the first time I ever stepped foot in the ring. Um, the official training started literally March, and it's crazy that I remember the date, it was March 2nd, 2019. Uh, that's when I first officially started training for the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. Um, at the time, it was trained by uh, Brian Fury. Uh, for the first whole year, I was training uh, for a full year, and then COVID happened, and then we had to take four to five months off. Then I came back for six months. I took a break for six months just because mentally I was like, and physically I was fried. And then I came back and then uh, I was training uh, pretty decent. I was actually getting better. And then I got a mild concussion from training. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, unfortunately that kind of ended it for me. Um, and also I got a little bit of a black eye, twist the ankle, and I just said I'm done. I just, I can't do it no more. And it's not like I'm afraid of getting hurt. It's more like I got to focus on, you know, you getting a, married. A job. And career. I have a job to worry about <laughs> yeah. and all that. But, you know, I uh, Chase Del Monte, and now he's the head trainer now. I, I learned a lot more from him. And he, he's one of the best trainers in New England right now. And uh, shout out to Chase Del Monte. For yeah. sure, former guest of Let Freedom. Yes, um, yeah. The one day I, you know, I did that I, I, at the time. I think it was already I was thirty four, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, I want to be a wrestler someday. But right. then you have all this other stuff that you got to do in life. Yeah. And, unless you know, some people they can just go right for it. Others they can't. Yeah. Or and um, yeah, but it was cool to just get in there and, and, and get a taste try. of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, what'd you find the most challenging part of? Because you, now you're training on you know a consistent basis. What yeah. was the most challenging part? The hardest thing, personally, for me, it's being dedicated, man. It really is because you want to make sure you you show up and do the best that you can. Because usually they would do training sessions four days a week. It would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, Saturday mornings. With my crazy job with 60 hours that I work a week, I try to go at least twice a week just to, you know, get in there and try to, like, do the best I can. And then sometimes I try to stay later, and then sometimes I got to leave at a certain time because I got to get to work. Um, and the challenging thing is the whole thing, man. You got to be dedicated. Uh, taking the bumps hurts, I'll be honest. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, and running the ropes, it hurts. So anybody that thinks it's just entertainment, which, yeah, it is, but it's brutal on your body. And, uh, you know, my knees started giving out at some point in times, especially during uh, training. Um, it takes a physical toll on your body. So I would say dedication and um, the body pain. Those were the two hardest for me. Nice. And what, what does a typical class look like? So uh, depending on how many people show up, it could be up to 10 students, 15 students, 20 to 30 students. Uh, nowadays, I know they do um, a setup where they have a beginner's class, uh, 
I, I think they still do like a midway type class, which you're like beginner, but you're also advanced, so like midway, and they have an advanced class. They used to have it all in one day, but now they do it separately, which I think is perfectly good, and they got two rings to do it. Um, so pretty much what Chase does and what the school does, they usually write down what kind of training they're going to be doing during the day. Uh, they start off with the warm-ups, um, pretty much do uh, conditioning workouts, and then eventually, you know, running the ropes, taking certain bumps, and then eventually go on from there and they tell you how to structure a match uh, with more of the advanced guys. And uh, for more beginners, they try to teach you... Um, like the fundamentals of like how to start a match, how to end a match. It depends on what they want to teach you. So that's pretty much what they usually do. They have everything on a whiteboard. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And um, now a lot of people come out and like you said, this is probably one of the best wrestling schools, not just around here, but probably the country. I mean, Top five, I would assume. I'm pretty sure Flip Gordon came all the way across country because that's where he wanted to train. Yeah. Um, so it does have... It's it's got a great track. I mean, record. look, yeah, look at their track record. Look at all the people. I mean, Carmelo Hayes, aka Christian Casanova, North American champion, cruiserweight champion, and it's kind of crazy that I saw that because I remember I took a picture of him when I was just a fan, and I had him hold my cruiserweight replica belt, and oh, yeah. knowing that he actually won it, it's like holy crap. Yeah, he ret know? and he retired it. Yeah, uh, it, it's been great seeing him on TV. We've no. had we've had a few guests on that from the wrestling community, and it's like he re he like you know. He went and did it. He, yeah. He's he's living his dream. So, uh, and he's just really good at it. He really is, man. You know, and I'm very proud of him. And he's uh, one of the guys who helped me out at the beginning uh, during a training session. So I'll never forget it. So. And I will say this, like, kind of just talking about it. I do believe most wrestlers do need to start young. Yes. Because before you Absolutely. have a job and before like you have responsibilities, and also your body can take it more. Yes. And not only that. I also do believe with wrestling now, there's all kinds of different wrestlers. Obviously, yes. you're either really big or you need to be athletic like Christian. Yes. He's, I'd like to, I don't know what other sports he did, but man, is he athletic. Yeah, he really is, man. I totally you know, agree with that. Not everybody can do no. what he does. No. Um, did you have any people that you really like enjoyed training with? Oh, God. There's a lot of people that I loved uh, training with. Personally, like, and, and I'm not trying to sound weird when I say this, uh, personally, I love training with the female wrestlers. I felt more comfortable with them than the guys sometimes uh, just because they, they were more, uh, I guess you could say, safer than <laughs> anything. Um, but personally, I, I remember I did a class match with uh, Basic Becca. She's amazing, man. And uh, we had a actually pretty good class match. Uh, Hermione Chaos, I love training with him. I will openly admit this, I am a Ricky Smokes Mark, even as a, <laughs> as a wrestling student. He, he's just so good, and uh, I met him when he was 18 years old. I think he's about 21 now, and he's kicking some major butt and chaotic right now, being the New England champion, and uh, personally, I feel like he's going to go places, man. But I uh, definitely love training with those. Uh, Teacher-wise, um, like I said, Chase Del Monte was really cool. Uh, Brian Logan, I love doing chain wrestling with Brian Logan. He was one of the best, and, uh, you know, he was great at what he did. Nice, nice. Yeah, Basic Becca's doing, I mean, she's doing really good. She's doing really right? well. Because I remember when she debuted, it, everybody oh, <laughs> yeah. got booed out of the building. Because I think we're supposed to get somebody else. I think it was supposed to finally be. Angel Sinclair, I It was think supposed it was. to be that yeah. match of the, yep. the Platinum Honeys finally facing each yes. other. Yes. So that was a match that everybody was looking forward to, right. and obviously things happened. Yeah. And uh, I felt, you know. But she embraced it. Yeah, she, she did. You know. And uh, I, I even asked her because I think she was uh, working uh, ring crew with us during that time. And, you know, I asked her afterwards, like, how nervous were you? Or being Because they gave her the mic to be start off with, too, yeah. which is like, holy crap, you got a mic microphone in your hand. That's got to be, like, a lot of, like, nerves going through your body. She's like, no, I was, I was fine. I was like, really? I was like, wow. And also just uh, knowing her before she, like, started making it big and chaotic, she is such a nice human being. I will tell you that right now. Very nice, very caring, uh, you know, tries to help out all the girls and guys as best she can. Um, 
but yeah, she she was definitely one of my favorites. Definitely one to look up to. And what was it like working the ring crew? Like, so setting up, but then, are you like security at, at certain points? Yeah, so personally for me, I know a lot of people don't like doing ring crew, which I understand. Personally, I love doing it, because you get to learn what it's like really all about, of like learning how you pay your dues in the wrestling business. Because you just don't go out there and train, you just go out and match. No, you actually learn the business. So, I mean, the way it works out, so my time schedule, if we have time to talk about it. So I would wake up at usually at 4.45 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I'd work at 6. Um, I would get out a little bit earlier just so I have enough time to drive wherever the destination is for the wrestling show. So I would get out at 4, so that's like a good 10-hour day. Drive all the way to wherever we need to be. Uh, help out the ring crew around 4.30, 5 o'clock and uh, set up the ring, set up the stage, set up the guardrails, and I know the wrestlers go over their matches and all that type of stuff. And um, then when it comes to showtime, yep, uh, all the students that helped out with ring crew were also security. Um, then the show ends, we break it all apart, and we bring it back to wherever it was, uh, which is now at the wrestling school. That's where we drop off all the, uh, the ring crew stuff and probably won't be home until 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's uh, that when Chase explained it too, you know, and being the guy that runs it, yeah. you know, he's saying the same thing. It's 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 a lot. It's a it's a day. It's a lot. It's a you lot. Know? And it takes a toll on your body, but personally I love working ring crew cuz it actually taught me how to put stuff together uh, cuz I'm like a handyman at home now and uh, it actually teaches you uh, and it gave me more res it, it gave me like more appreciation what the business is all about. Because you want to make sure you put this awesome show together, not just for you in the future, but for all the wrestlers that are performing on that platform. Because imagine, like, the ring crew guys that do WrestleMania. That's the biggest show of the year. And for us to, like, learn how that all works, it's it's a pleasure. It's an honor, personally. Awesome. awesome. And I guess one other question just did you ever have, an, uh, as security, a concern about someone getting out of hand like a like a fan was i know not all these venues serve alcohol but there right. are some that do Th those ones i'll be honest i mean there's certain fans that i know that i've seen as a fan at the show and then times at security the ones that i really just i'll be honest i personally do not like are the ones that like say f-bombs and say you know sexual references like it's just like can you not say that there was a couple there's times one I particular that. fan that i know of that's notorious for that yeah and i remember back in like 2013 and i don't, I don't know his name but i know i know who he is yeah he said some pretty vile things to Davian at the time, and yeah. Davian might have been 18. Oh, wow. And her boyfriend or brother or something was like, talk about her like that again, I'm going to knock you out. Yeah. And the guy goes, it's a joke. He was saying funny, and I kind of was, I didn't want them to fight, but yeah. I was like, he's right. It's not funny. And, and let me tell you this. I went to a NXT show back in 2018 with a couple friends, and personally, I respect all women's wrestlers. I really do. I'm glad they're they're kicking butt right now and doing their thing, and I'm glad they're starting a main event and stuff. So I went to an NXT show, and uh, this was in Lowell, and um, perfect example, this guy was just, you know, saying F-bombs, saying all this horrendous stuff about the females, and I'm like, why are you being so disrespectful? A lot of people were, like, telling him to shut up. This is the crazy side of me at the time, <laughs> when I was uh, not calm at the time. I literally got on my chair and flipped out of him. I was like, dude, if you start saying that, I'm going to go over this chair and I'm going to punch you in the face. You know, because it's like, there's kids around. Kids don't yeah. need to hear that. It's a different generation. It's not the Attitude Era, unfortunately, anymore. And even during the Attitude Era, I'm sure some of the guys, yeah, they were a little bit rowdy, but I'm sure they showed some respect. But I personally, when it comes to crowds, uh, just the people that show disrespect like that, swearing, F-bombs, showing disrespect towards the women, and it's just like, dude, just shut up. <laughs> yeah, now I'm with you. And I know Chaotic has its own fan base, so it's a lot of the same people. Right. I used to get annoyed, and I loved Woburn. Yeah. Loved going to the Woburn yes. House Lodge. But sometimes you get these people that stumble in that don't even like wrestling. Yeah. That just come in to shit all over it. Yeah. And get drunk, and it's like... Can you let us enjoy this? Like, yeah. if you're not into it, go go bowling. Yeah. Like, why Seriously. Do you, you know, like. Exactly. I, I agree with you. There's nothing I hate more than uh, someone that doesn't understand why other people like something and then feel it's like their job to ruin that. Yeah, exactly. I, I have people that I will never have over my house ever again to watch wrestling because it's like. They were ruining it. Yeah. You know, so. Just crapping all over it. Trust can't, me. I can't stand that. I can't either, man. Um, we got to get to the fan questions mm -hmm. here. First one from Jax Rangers, which is um, 
the Free Jacks uh, fan podcast run by Phil Harris. We had him on the live stream the other day. Mm-hmm. Has anyone ever told you you look like Corey Taylor from Slipknot? <laughs> it, it's funny. I've actually have heard that a few times, uh, and I'm like, really? I was like, is it the ears? Is it the ears? I need to know now. Is it the big Dumbo ears that I got going on? Well, I mean, I grew into them now. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard that a bunch of times. And I take that as a compliment. The only funny thing is, like, I know he's uh, pretty short. I think he's, like, 5'10". I'm, like, 6'3", 6'4". So if we took a picture together, I'd be like... <laughs> but, uh, no, I love Corey Taylor. I'm a good fan. Uh, Fairweather fan of Slipknot. Saw them live. And they put on kick-ass shows, man. Love them. Oh. But, yeah, I've heard that a couple times. Uh, we got a question from Casey Coutreau, first time uh, asking, and I believe his brother's Greg, yeah. who's a two-time guest of Let Freedom Ring. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you become ups- uh, obsessed with Batman, and what about the character do you like most and dislike most? Ooh, that is a very good question. I've been obsessed with Batman since I can remember, which was uh, four years old. Uh, my grandmother, uh, God bless her soul, uh, she got me into Batman. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I remembered uh, I, I used to go over her house and we used to watch, uh, shockingly, the Adam West TV series oh, back yes. in the day. Yeah, I think it was like on TV Land or something. But yeah, it would pop in and I would watch that. Um, and of course, I watched like the original Batman 89 and I watched the Batman Returns and Batman Forever at that time as a child. That was my favorite one with Val Kilmer. At the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I still love it. I still love it. Uh, yeah, I it's care. just not my but favorite. At the t- because, yeah. I, again, I was yeah. younger and all that and people would be like, Val Kilmer, what? <laughs> but um, yeah, I've just been like so obsessed with it. I like the fact that he doesn't need superpowers. Um, he just knows how to combat fight Uh, i love like the whole costume i love the logo um the whole story behind it about his parents and uh you know i love all the super villains and the story and i've read more of the comic books on all these uh different aspects of uh batman joker all these different villains and uh just always been a huge fan ever since i was four and i used to have like bathing suit bottoms that i remember that my grandmother (laughs) gave me and just if it wasn't for her i wouldn't be a batman fan so Awesome. Who, who's the best Batman of all time, you think? Oh, God, I get asked that question a lot, man. I know where I stand. So right. I mean, for me, there's three of them, but if I had to pick one, I, usually I would say Adam West because, again, he's the original, and that's the one I watched starting off. But, um, oh, man. I, I got I to gotta go with my boy Michael Keaton, man. Awesome. Yeah, Michael That's... Keaton. <laughs> Usually I would say Christian Bale too, but Michael Keaton, I mean, he just, he, he did the role right. He played a good Bruce Wayne and Batman and yeah. I got to say though, I think Ben Affleck's a little bit underrated because the movies were so bad. Yeah. But I didn't think he was that bad. The only, the only, again, I, I have this debate with Kat all the time and her dad too, because he's a huge comic book nerd as well. Um, just, there's just something about Ben Affleck. I think he made a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And there's those two different scenarios there. I think he made a great Bruce Wayne, just Batman-wise. I think they just didn't give him the right scripture, like you said, probably. And also the voice disguising machine, I didn't like that. Um, The costume, I just, I don't know. I wasn't a fan. And I I know it's not his fault. I know he's a terrific actor. Just Those movies could have been a lot better. They could have been. Um, but yeah, I love Batman too. I gotta see the new one. Oh, the new one! I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It was a it was a really good movie. Robert Pattinson uh, did a very very good job of the character. Um, it was I gave it a B plus, and some people I actually uh, wrote a comment on uh, Bear Bronson's uh, Facebook page, which was kind of funny because uh, he posted like saying this is the greatest Batman ever. It was the best one and all that. And I was like, yeah, it was all right. I gave it a B plus and he gave me an angry emoji and he called me an L for loser, which I thought was hilarious. But no, I thought the movie was fairly good. It was just, it was way too dark. Like yeah. way too dark. I, this is the thing about this movie. I'm hearing it's either the best thing ever or I've also heard it's the worst thing ever. Then I think where you're somewhere in the middle, but yeah. a lot of times, a lot of the posts that I've seen, like I don't get it. Yeah. Or I hated it, or this is amazing. Well, watch it again. That's all yeah. I can say to you. I, I'm going to see it, but every time I, I'm like three hours, oh, man. But I, like I said, I thought it was a fairly good movie. The storyline was pretty good, um, but nothing could beat the original Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. I'm sorry. That was the best Batman yeah. movie of all time. I will not disagree there. Yeah. Uh, from Kat Dion, that's your fiance? That's my fiance. And Kat, I apologize. Looks like she had some other questions coming in, but they were a little bit later before No, nah, it's all good. 
Um, but she wants to know who's your favorite jackass member and why? Steve O. Um, the reason being, and then not just because he's funny or anything like that. He is, don't get me wrong. Um, but no, on a personal level, I'm, I'm, as a celebrity, I'm very proud of him for being sober for 14 years. I know he went through a, a crazy, crazy time. Um, I actually read his book. Uh, the first book I can actually say I sat down and read the whole thing. Didn't read any of my comic books until I was done with that book. Um, just the stories he tells, it's just, it's amazing how much stuff that guy has gone through um, and with all the drugs and drinking that he's done and he can like lift himself up and become a better human being. Um, you know, he's, he's got it all now. I mean, he just did uh, Jackass 4. Uh, he's got his own podcast, which is fairly good. Uh, he's had a lot of great guests. I, I like to call it a retro type of uh, podcast because he's had like a lot of great 90s actors on there, like Janiel White from uh, like Steve Urkel. Oh, yeah. Uh, Corey Feltman he had on there and a couple other 90s, uh, you know, actors that I can't think of on the top of my head. And uh, he does like his own vlogs on uh, on his YouTube page. And actually, Kat got me an early uh, birthday present. Uh, my birthday's not until May. We're going to go see him live doing his stand-up comedy on uh, april 30th so nice yeah have you heard his him talk about the umaga segment on raw yes i did was, it uh... was hilarious but i'm like oh yeah stay he, down yeah i mean and, and i'll be honest like back then yeah i can totally understand with some of the wrestlers uh getting mad about something like that but then again it's like He's an actor. He doesn't, he doesn't know, know anything about the business, you know, so. Umaga protecting the business at all costs. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, elbowing him and telling him to stay down and yeah. beating the living daylights out uh, of him, man. He was already pretty, you know, stiff guy. Like, yeah, you know. he was. Um, also wants to know, who <laughs> would you sleep with, uh, also, for a million dollars, would you sleep with Michael Myers or Leatherface? Hmm. Either way, you're not probably surviving that. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to die. I mean... God, for a million dollars, huh? Well, if I slept next to Leatherface all day, I'm going to be covered in grossness and probably wouldn't be showering for months. I think uh, Michael Myers is a classy man, you know, with his uh, one-piece uh, jumpsuit, <laughs> uh, white mask, and he's got that hair thing going on. And, you know, he's always ready to cook dinner with that, you know, that knife that he carries around. Yeah, we have him on the table. Yeah, exactly. Him. I mean, look how classy he looks. So, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge Leatherface fan, but I got to go with Michael Myers and, you know, Jim Joss, if he was watching this right now, and hopefully he is. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to him. He's a huge Michael Myers fan. So Michael Myers, I'd sleep with Michael Myers, marry him, whole nine yards. I, I got to say, I'm not a huge Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. I love, and I freaking love Halloween. Yeah. I'm just not into that. And, and, and honestly, I talk about that with some coworkers about that, and I totally get it because there's so many different movies, and a lot of them just don't make sense with the storyline. Um, personally, for me, Texas Chainsaw, I go with the original and the remake, and personally, the uh, I guess you could say "quote unquote" prequel of the series because uh, it was called Leatherface because you got to see how he became Leatherface. So, yeah, that might but, be interesting to see. Actually. Yeah, but uh, other than that, like the new one they just put on Netflix, not a fan. It was just like I feel like they were trying to do like a kind of like a Halloween, like forty years later. Be it just it made no sense to me, and the, the killings. It just uh, that movie just did not make sense. It was just ugh, terrible, <laughs> terrible. Understandable. Um, from Kyle. Uh, Kyle Osiris. Ripley. I think yeah, it was. Kyle Ripley. Yeah. Yeah. Osiris. Uh, Osiris. I'm sorry, Kyle. I, 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 my hand. I can't sometimes can't even read my own handwriting. Uh, <laughs> exactly how great is greatness at its greatness? Well, I put this in the comment when I answered him. So he is the chin kicking, the green smoking, the super kick sick, uh, sticking, all night token, record breaking, history making, most impact waking, most unforgettable son of a beep. You'll have a grace to bring with. He is greatness at his greatest. No, uh, Kyle, uh, he's actually a... And here's the thing. I'm not a big fan of backhand wrestling. I'm not in any way, shape, or form. But uh, the company that I guess you could say he worked for was called Extreme Showdown Wrestling. And they are really big in, uh, in Texas and also really big in the YouTube field. Um, it's a company he started in, and I'm friends with uh, the owner of that who lives in Texas as well. His name is uh, Alex Garza, better known as the hardcore kid Alex G. So these guys really started in the backyard, and they were getting like a lot of momentum, and they, they actually did the best they could to promote the show and actually 
take the time out of their day to actually trying to self-train themselves, which you shouldn't be doing, but they did it and uh, they actually made the product look pretty presentable. And I've always became a big fan of that. And uh, they're not going out there beating the crap out of each other. They're actually going out there trying to put on a, you know, a really good show. And uh, these guys went a long way to even having a wrestling ring and actually promoting like real, like local shows in their area. So I have a lot of respect for those guys, and that's the only backyard wrestling company you're ever going to see me watch. You know, when because you get into that debate, and people are like, "Oh, that's just not." If you sign a waiver, go do whatever you want right. or whatever. Yeah. It's it's your life. You yeah. Know. Um, I know we had some sort of backyard wrestlers in in Manchester that went on for like 20 years. W A W. Yeah. Yeah. I went to I went to them once. Uh, yeah. The the matches were unwatchable. Like I tried yeah, to watch them were. on YouTube, and I'm like, "Yeah, you, you guys don't know what you're doing." And sure, like you can have your own little click that does that, whatever. But um, it was, it was, it was like it was so boring. It, and, and it's kind of funny, and I totally agree with you with that. But these guys, they actually tried to do the best they can to put on a good product. They actually like write scriptures. Well, the the owner of it, he writes scriptures of the show and like wants to do this, do that. And you got to think these guys aren't making money doing this. Yeah. You know, they're just taking the time out of their day doing this. But it's kind of funny because they go through like uh, politics, just like majority of wrestling companies go for. And it's like, how many backyard wrestling companies can you hear actually go through that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I actually looked at them as like a real legit company, and I got a lot of respect for those guys. But yeah. Osiris, greatness at his greatest. We used to, we did a little backyard wrestling in middle school, and it was we always a de- <laughs> it was always a debate who's going to be the champion. Yeah, and it was all like, all right, you get the title, yeah. you get one title offense, and you got to drop to the next person. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> and and if I can point something else too that is yeah. so hilarious about backyard wrestling, Alex brought this uh, not Osiris, but the guy Alex who owns the company, he brought a good point to it. Backyard wrestling companies, they have probably like, what, 11, 15 wrestlers if they're lucky. You don't need a 1,000 belts involved with the show if you have 15 wrestlers. Yeah. For them, they only have three. They have the heavyweight title. They have a championship called the Anarchy Championship, which is uh, defended 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Kind of well, like a hard card. Yeah. Or the 24-7 yeah. title. Yeah, and then they just presented a new secondary title because they, they like the Anarchy title, but they know it was kind of silly. But they still have it, and uh, they called it the Interstate Championship, which is like a Texas-based championship. So I respect that very much, and they don't need like millions of championship belts with like the little <laughs> bit of wrestlers they got going on. And that's just so funny. They like you know everybody. Everybody wanted a belt. Yeah. I think when we did it, I finally just said, "I just give me the IC title. Yeah, I'll just, just give keep me that. this one. Yeah, just let me hold that one. <laughs> it looks cooler on me. Yeah. You know? uh, I want to get some top fives with you. Um, All right. Because I, I have two two kind of movie categories here. First, what's your top five favorite movies? Maybe that are non-horror. Okay. But I definitely want to know your top five horror, so we'll get all to right, that in a second. All right, let me see here. Uh, my favorite top five movies. Wow, that's tough. <sighs> Man. If we're going back in time and we're talking about the nows, too. Mighty Ducks had to be up there. That was like a good childhood, um, you know, Movie for me, franchise one through three. Um, definitely have a jersey with my name on it, oh, nice. with my number on yeah. it. Yeah, because there was just something about that movie that was so inspirational. I mean, that was like my Sandlot back in the day, personally for me. So Mighty Ducks would have to be up there. Um, of course, the original Power Rangers movie. I'm a huge Power Ranger <laughs> fan. Let's not go. Let's go. You with got that. to meet the Green Ranger. I did. Yeah. I met Jason David Frank, which was like one hell of a pleasure for me because uh, he he was actually my childhood hero, and I caught up with his uh, career later on in life. And uh, this is actually bigger than meeting some of the wrestlers I met because he he was a big influence in my life, and just he always had that never give up attitude with his character. So I respected that a lot. But I would definitely have to say uh, Mighty Ducks. Power Rangers. Honestly, I love The Mask with Jim Carrey. I thought that was a hilarious movie. I talk about it with people at work all the time. Um, I would definitely <laughs> say Step Brothers. Everyone loves Step Brothers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a classic. Why not like Step Brothers? And uh, fifth one. Again, I have so many movies. I would, I would gotta, I gotta, I gotta say Friday. Uh, okay. I, was, uh, I know it sounds bad because of how that movie is. Uh, again, watched that movie as long as I can remember. I was four years old watching that, and uh, 
it's one of the classic movies. So. R.I.P. Debo too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. A lot of the guys, a lot of guys passed away from that movie. Uh, Bernie Mac, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that was that's almost twenty years ago yeah. that he passed. Yeah. No, like, that can't be right. 10, 10, 15, 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, now I'm I'm really curious on this because I I don't get a lot of people on the show that enjoy the horror genre. Yeah. But I do. Yeah. What's your top five favorite horror movies? All right, top five. And it's not in particular order, like one and five. So for me, uh, Saw, the Saw movies is definitely my number one. I can tell you that for a fact. And I go at it, like some of the movies are a little bit, heh -huh. And there's like so many prequel sequences in the movie, but I liked it. It was a great concept uh, just due to the fact is this guy literally uh, has these people hostage and they have a chance to live or die because of all the bad they've done in the world <coughs> of the world of society. And uh, personally, like, yeah, what he was doing was bad, <laughs> but also he was like trying to save other people's lives through going through the hell that, you know, some of these people went through because of these people. So definitely saw... Um, Jason Voorhees, uh, Friday the 13th, loved those movies. Um, personally, like one through six was the best one. After that, they were kind of crappy. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason, that was good. Um, with the Friday the 13th, and uh, the remake was good. But yeah, Friday the 13th, saw, um, Scream, definitely a Scream fan, especially the first, uh, Two and the remake, that was the best one. Well, not the best one, but that was the best one after the last two uh, before that. Um, the original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that the best one out of all of them, that was my personal favorite. And shockingly enough, that was my parents' first date back in the <laughs> 1970s. I think it was 1974, that was their first date, and yeah. it was at the drive-ins. And um, oh, I... Just because it's a it's a cult classic as well, I guess you could say Halloween was out there as well. So yeah, Halloween's definitely my my number one. Uh, Friday Thirteenth is my number. Obviously, I mean, but I got I'm now into like I do enjoy the Freddies, and I never gave them a chance for yeah. so long. Yeah, I know they they those start to get really bad. Yeah, but I thought the first four were. I know the second one's kind of. There's a lot of things I've right. said about that movie. Right. I still like it. Yeah. Um, but I thought the first four were good, and then it goes totally off the rails. Per personally, I like the first one. I mean, just gonna, it's a cult classic. It it's just funny because I started watching it again as an adult. It was like one of those movies I was afraid of as a kid, so I didn't watch it for many years. Uh, so eventually I watched it again. It was like on demand, and I watched it at like 20 years old, and I gave it another chance, and I thought it was good. My older sister, Megan, who was a guest on my show recently, um, she hated Freddy Krueger. She was petrified of him. Uh, just because of the fact he gets in your nightmares and kills you, whatever. It's terrifying but as a child. It is. It is. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, personally, for me, I watched it, uh, I mean, again, it was the 80s, and I watched it, and I was like, it is, like, scary, but I was like, how can you be afraid of this guy? This movie's kind of cheesy in some kind of ways, but... I liked it. It was they, good. They make him, like, a comedy character as it yeah. goes on. I thought, and I, I will say... Dream Warriors, can't get enough of that movie. Yeah. Um, but I also want to know this, you're a big music guy too. Yes. What are your top five favorite albums? I don't know if I have a top five favorite albums per se. I mean, if I said all the Linkin Park albums, I would just be biased because yeah. I'm a huge Linkin Park fan. Um, but I, I'll definitely go with the artist to answer that question. Oh, yeah, no, that works. Um, definitely Linkin Park would definitely be my number one. Saw them twice and I, I had the pleasure to uh, see Chester Banks, uh, Chester Banks in live twice. Great artist. Um, I gotta say, Papa Roach is definitely my second favorite. I love, I just love rap rock combination together. It just sounds unique, different. It just, it sounds really awesome. So I gotta say, Lincoln Park, Papa Roach, uh, Limp Biscuit back in the day uh, for what they were <laughs> worth. Uh, they were awesome. I loved them, uh, especially that song that nobody probably knows, the, the, the main theme song for WrestleMania 19, Crack Addict. I thought that was a badass <laughs> song. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Amy Lee, uh, Evanescence. I love their music, uh, especially the newer uh, acoustic kind of music now. And... Um, if I got to throw a classic rock in there, the original Guns N' Roses. 
Love Guns N' Roses. They, you know, they took so long to get back together. Yeah. You know, you think about all the music that was there and these bands that just can't get to get, like, can't get on the same page. Yeah. It's like, well, now we're old. Yeah. I, don't, I, I think they were touring with Axl Rose again. Yeah, they were. Um, and I know you want to talk about this. You have top five favorite comic books? So, yeah. Uh, for me, I don't collect uh, individual issues. I collect uh, graphic novels. Um, definitely The Walking Dead. That was the first ever comic book slash graphic novels I ever read. Personally, the comic book is way better than the show. Show went on, it just went on too long. Yeah, and honestly, like, yeah, the books, they have, uh, volume-wise, they got 33 volumes. Issue-wise, they probably got, like, hundreds. I can't really think of it. But the story plot of that was just so good. Um, and the, the show was just so confusing. The only thing I'm going to say, if anybody's a big Walking Dead fan of the show, read the comic books, because I'll tell you right now, Carl survives the whole thing. I saw a funny gif, too, about the show that said, uh, screw getting to know each other. I want to know when you stop watching The Walking Dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. everybody fell off. I was like, I'm going to stick with the show. I'm sticking it out. And then I couldn't anymore. Yeah, like Jim, yeah. again, he, he loves the show, and I just, I don't get it. It's not the original story plot. The first season and somewhat of the second season and somewhat of the third season are like the only story plots that are close to the comic book as possible, especially the first one. Um, when Negan got introduced, like that whole story plot with him and Glenn when he, you know, bashed him with a baseball bat, that actually happened in the comic books. But that was just way more intense, I think, in the comic books than it was the show. But yeah, definitely check out the comic book. Um, again, sound biased because I'm a huge Power Ranger fan. The comic books, the continuation of it. Love the Power Ranger graphic novels. I have every single one. Same thing with The Walking Dead. Um, personally, the graphic novels I read are pretty much like continuation stories from like shows or movies. Like Sons of Anarchy, they have uh, six volumes going on. I like that. Uh, majority of the Batman comics slash Joker comics, those ones are awesome as well. And um, if I had to pick a fifth one, ooh, fifth one. Anything Suicide Squad, not the movie, but the books are really good. Nice, nice. Yes, yeah. yeah, I've heard. I need to sit down and watch that because I want to know why people hated it so much. But yeah, uh, just I don't know. It's just again, Jared Leto was a big fan. I'll keep it at that. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's not happy about how people feel. About yeah, that. I know, but <laughs> yeah, step up. <laughs> uh, all right, I want to do some blank versus blank here. I'm gonna give you two things. You got to pick one, uh, but you got to tell me why. Okay. Uh, more impact on the wrestling business, Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan? Like who would win? Who's more important? I mean, that that's a tough question, but if... Hulk Hogan was definitely more important of the 80s back in WWE, and Ric Flair was really important back in the NWA, WCW. I mean, those are two completely different companies, two different shows, two different styles of wrestling. But honestly, between the two, yeah, I might not be a fan of him, but I have to go with Hulk Hogan. We say it all uh, a lot of times on the show. Forget Terry Bollea. We yes. leave off what Terry Bollea yes. has represented. Here right. And just look at the character. I I don't, like everybody always says Ric Flair's the greatest. Hogan even says the greatest. But, man... Money Hogan, attraction. H Hogan was like the biggest thing in wrestling in the 80s. Yeah. On the biggest stage. Flair might be, you know, because people are like, well, his in-ring work. I go, that's yeah. it. Your in-ring work doesn't matter when you're yeah. selling out all these giant places. And, WrestleMania. Yeah. You know? and, and you know what? I got to say this. I'm sorry for all the times I talk crap about John Cena because now that I understand the wrestling business now, John Cena is one of the greatest of all time. Oh, no doubt. He I is. Mean, so being in my uh, 19, you know, his run was I was like 19 into my 20s. I, I couldn't stand John Cena. Yeah. And then as I got older, I started to appreciate really what he was. Yeah. But at the time, he didn't, that wasn't, you can't have fans that grew up in the Attitude Era. Mm -hmm. in, and I grew up in the Attitude Era in middle school. Yeah. So it's hard to go from, you know, that to what John Cena was doing in the PG Era. It was very hard yeah. to transition from that because... That's not what we wanted. Right. I was watching ECW at midnight yeah. growing up. Right. You know, and, and I'd move past Hulk Hogan each of, you know. Right, right. Days. 
even though when Hogan uh, switched to that, I was all about it again. Yeah. Which today was the 20 year anniversary of when he faced The Rock. Yep. Um, better uh, strange gimmick in the 90s, nails or Papa Shango? I don't know why. I, I really liked Papa Shango, man. I thought that was a character they could have gone more with personally. Um, but yeah, Papa Shango was definitely up there. I love Papa Shango. I love the character. Uh, these guys terrified me yeah. as a kid. I could see why. They were absolutely ter- I mean, when, when uh, you know, I didn't know any better. When Papa Shango made the warrior drip black. Yeah. And when Nails beat the crap out of the yeah. big boss, man. Like, yeah. It was terrifying. I'm surprised you didn't say Papa Shango versus the Boogeyman. That would have been an interesting one right yeah. there. Yeah, that would that would have been a good match. Okay. Uh, I will say this. Nails, I never knew it, but Nails' voice, uh, they used some kind of special thing when he was in WWF because I finally heard an interview post-WWF, and I was like, wait a second. And someone played them side by side. I was like, oh, they got me. Oh, wow. Even, to the, even as an adult, I didn't know like, wow. that wasn't his actual voice. That's crazy. Um, would you rather listen to Slipknot or Corn? Corn. I've seen them both live the same time too. Um, Corn, it's like this. They play like really. See, everyone like always gives me crap because they're like, oh, they're not at their prime anymore. They can still play a kick ass show. Uh, Slipknot, they do a great performing show with like all the pyrotechnics and like all these stands that they're on and everything like that. Don't get me wrong, it's an entertaining show. But uh, Jonathan Davis, man, he's, he's a just a very, very talented guy. Uh, nothing against Corey Taylor. He's very talented, too, but there's just something about corn. I grew up with corn first for my sister. She was a huge corn fan back in the day, still is. And uh, Jonathan Davis, man, very unique guy, still has the dreadlocks, wears the Adidas. Love it. I remember when corn finally won on TRL. Every day it was yeah. like the Backstreet Boys would win, the Backstreet Boys are in sync. Yeah. And I'll, you know, I think I was in eighth grade. And when corn finally won, I remember being like, yeah, we, yeah right. they're going to lose tomorrow, but they won on TRL <laughs> today. You say, Carson Daly. <laughs> Heck know? yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, who wins in a fight, Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? <sighs> this is the hot button question here. Wow. That's like a movie we all wanted to see, too. <sighs> Sorry, Jim. I'm going to. I'm gonna, you're going to hate me. You're going to delete me from my life. You're not going to be my best man anymore after I say this. Jason Voorhees. So here's the bit of the debate on it. Yeah, that's fine. Which Jason, because everybody, I, I, you remember Royce Bishop and yep. Anthony Brogdon. I've had him on the show. We've asked this question. He always goes, well, which Jason are you talking about? From because he movies. does yeah. become such a zombie, unstoppable right. guy. I mean. Because uh, I think Myers could take. Jason in one and two. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, two yeah. Two and three. Yeah. You know. I mean, personally, I mean, if it was like <laughs> Jason from Freddy versus Jason, oh, Michael Myers wouldn't have a chance. But then again, there's Michael Myers from the Rob Zombie film that they can take who's more taller. So yeah. if you had those two, it would be like a legit death match. Like, who's going to win till they fight to the death? Uh, personally, still, Jason Voorhees, man. I mean... He just sneaks up behind you when you least expect it, man. And uh, his kills are way more crazier than Michael Myers. And I know that sounds bad, but I mean. I think uh, with the new movies, I don't know if someone was just posting this, Myers might have a higher kill count now than Jason. Really? Oh, I, yeah. I, someone did post that. I, I don't know was... if it's accurate. I'd have to go back and count, And watch but... every single one, yeah. take a notebook. Yeah. Okay. How many deaths? Because <laughs> uh, he wiped out that whole, all those, you know. All yep. the people. In, we but between to... both of them, they definitely have the most deaths in oh, between both of them. No doubt. Freddy's not even close. No. Um, new Scream or the new Scream, because they just called it Scream. Right. Or 1996. Scream. 1996. I mean, come on now. Yeah. I thought that was slim. Like, come on. <laughs> that movie, like I said, has so much rewatchability. Like, yeah. you, you know, and you saw the new one, right? Yes. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And I like how uh, Skeet Ulrich came back. And they did what they could do to make him look like what he did back in 1996. And I was very impressed with it. It was just a a montage of him, but still, it was like, It was interesting, though, that she could see what he actually looked like. I guess she must have seen photos of him. Yeah. Um, I really, I don't want to spoil anything. Right. Because I know this hasn't even, I think it's just hit. But I I suggest it. Uh, I was a little disappointed in the end on who the killers were, but that's all I'm going to say. But it was very shocking. You yeah. like you didn't see it coming though. You're like, oh, those are the killers. Like, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, and I, that's the best thing about Scream is that always that. Who is it? That twist. You know. That's why I didn't like the fourth one very much. I was. Yeah. I, uh, I the third one though got ruined because of 
well, Columbine had just happened and a bunch of other things, and they dulled it down. Yeah. They rewrote it. It just didn't come out the way it should have. Yeah. Um, would you rather watch All Elite Wrestling or World Wrestling Entertainment? You know, I, I'll be honest. I haven't watched too much All Elite Wrestling. I only watched it at the very beginning. I'll be honest. Wrestling, I haven't really watched when I started training because I looked at it differently. Um, God, people are probably going to hate me for saying this. WWE, man. Uh, just for the fact that's that's the that's the NFL. That is the that is the major leagues of baseball. You know, if you want to make it, that's the place to make it. And I get it. And the thing that's so crazy to me about it nowadays, I, I, I respect all the talent in the world with all these wrestlers that are trying to make it, and I'm proud of every single one of them, and I get it. It's a hard business to get into. But between both companies, they have so much talent. They got hundreds, so it's like hard to keep up with all these wrestlers that they have. But uh, personally, in my perspective, if you want to make it, WWE. I think we're about to see a transition, though, of the indie independent wrestlers are going to go to AEW. Yep. The WWE is just training athletes. Yeah. You probably no, saw I, the I definitely class agree with you today. On that. Yeah. Um, where they're just getting college kids because now college kids can get paid even yeah. while they're in college. So WWE's jumped on it. Yeah. So I wonder, like, I don't think they'll never sign someone that has hype from the independents, but we might see the end of those days. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, last question. Two of your guests, two of your friends, you got to pick one. Uh, Jim Joss oh. or Col- uh, Christopher Payne? Oh, you didn't that's a, sorry, that's the <sighs> toughest one. This is always the toughest well, one. Well, the fact like, that you didn't put my other best friend, who I've known for many years, Zach Warnica, it's like, oh, why'd you forget about him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And you know what? It was a hard decision to try to choose who the best man was going to be for my wedding. I love them all equally. I can't answer that one, but I feel like ugh, I can't answer that one. We don't put your feet to the fire. Yeah, but no, <laughs> here, here's the thing. Like, I, I can't answer that. The only thing I will say... Jim is the best man at my wedding. Chris and Zach are the groomsmen of my wedding. I'll answer it like that. But honestly, they all have different personalities. I love them all equally. Um, They all have different personalities to them. I can't choose. Um, I love them all equally. They're like my brothers. They've been there through thick and high water for me, Uh, especially Chris and Zach at the beginning when they first met me because of the time. I didn't get a car or license until I was like 23, and um, you know they drove me a lot, and they've been there for me through my bad times and good times, all three of them. So I love them all equally. Fair enough. Yeah. We don't put your feet to the fire. Yeah, on that. you can't do that. But uh, <laughs> and we always throw the trick one. Thanks, yeah. Brandon, for coming yeah, on. Thank you for having me. This on. has been a blast. Heck yeah. Um, no attack today. Yep, yeah, we're good. Um, I got <laughs> your back, bro. I got you. <laughs> he was security, so I'm not. Yeah. We got double security today. But anyways, everybody out there, keep your heads up. Uh, Have a great week, and until next time, let freedom ring.